did Daddy switch to Postum? Your father says there's no caffeine in Postum. Nothing to spoil your sleep. And your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free, and by Post's 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest-selling brand flakes. It's a well-known fact that the town of Springfield, where the Andersons live, is a fairly up-to-date little community. And the Andersons are a fairly up-to-date family. But every now and then, the head of the Anderson household becomes irked with the modern scheme of things and insists on a return to the way things were done in the good old days. Take this Saturday afternoon, for example. Jim is out in the garage with Bud building what uh, seems to be a kite. Hand me a piece of string, will you, Bud? Dad. Hurry up, I need a piece of string. Dad, we're, we're just going to a lot of work for nothing. You can buy a kite at the drugstore for a dime. Buy, buy, buy. That's all you kids think of these days. You want to buy everything. When I was a boy, we made most of our toys. And we had a lot of fun doing it, too. Now, hurry up. Hand me a piece of string. Okay. And our toys meant a lot more to us, too. Uh-huh. Because we'd put some time and effort into making them. We took pride in them. And took better care of them, too. Uh-huh. There, that ought to hold the crossbar. What we need now is some glue. Have we got any? I don't think so. Uh, uh, do you want me to run down to the drugstore and get some? There you go again. Run down to the drugstore. <laughs> but what would you kids do if you didn't have a drugstore to run down to? I guess we'd have to run down to the market. <laughs> oh, me. They carry the same stuff. Want me to run down? No. If we don't have any glue or paste, we'll make some. Make some? You probably don't even know how to do that. Oh, sure, with flour and water. But Mom says she doesn't like us kids getting in the flour. And she says it's actually cheaper to buy some paste. Want me to buy some? No. I'd be glad to. And, and while I'm there, I could pick you up a kite. Pick me up a kite? Well, this isn't for me. I'm making this kite for you. Oh. Well, I don't care much for kites. All boys care for kites. You just have to feel the thrill of flying a kite to become a real enthusiast. Well, if that's for me, I don't want an old homemade one. You can buy a good one for a dime. What's wrong with this one we're making? Oh, I don't know. Will kites have sticks for crossbars? I don't think those umbrella ribs will work. Well, they used to work when I was a boy. I've made a lot of kites this way. These metal ribs are lighter than wood and a lot stronger. Daddy! How are you going to get those ribs back on the umbrella? Oh, that umbrella's no good anymore. Daddy! In the garage, kitten. At the drugstore, they got box kites for only 15 cents. This kind flies better. Say, Daddy. Come in, kitten, and watch how a real kite is put together. I haven't got time. Can I have 20 cents? 20 cents? What for? I want to buy a pearl necklace. For 20 cents? I know they're expensive, but Patty Davis has some. Kitten, you can't buy pearls for 20 cents. Well, maybe these aren't real genuine pearls. They're probably just some old diamonds. <laughs> Can I have some? Can I, Daddy? Kitten, if you want a string of beads, why don't you make some? Make some? Yeah, out of umbrella ribs. <laughs> no, out of salt and water and, uh, well, I forget what else. Your mother will remember. Go in and ask her. I want some real beads. Well, these are real beads. I remember when I was a boy. You made beads? No, but my sister did. And they were very pretty, too. She colored them all different colors. Sounds pretty corny. Well, it's not. Why go to all that bother when you can run down to the dime store and buy some good ones? I'll swear, I don't know what's happening to you kids. I think you're being destroyed by civilization. Where what? Stores have become entirely too handy. They're robbing you of all the real pleasures and thrills of childhood. Twenty cents isn't much, Daddy. Uh, maybe we ought to sell this place and move out into the country. A long way from stores and people. If we get a place out there in Lakeview Heights, we could get a television set. <laughs> television? Yeah. 
they say they can get two channels out there direct from Omaha. Well, that's not the idea of moving out in the country to get a television, to get away from some things. Come on, let's go into the house. Aren't you going to finish your kite? Certainly, but Bud and I are going in to make some paste. We are. Come on. Okay, I'm coming. How about it, Daddy? Can I add the pearls? Why don't you try making some? Maybe you'll discover it's a lot of fun. You'll never find out if you don't try. Patty Davis has some real ones. But she's missing the thrill and pride in owning something she's created herself. Yeah. You? What does that mean? I don't know. Just yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. When I was a boy, we didn't have one-tenth of things kids nowadays have. And I can see now that it was an advantage. Taught us how to be resourceful and imaginative and handy and... Go on in, kitten. Hurry up, bud. I'm coming. That screen door certainly needs fixing. Margaret, you ought to get someone to fix that back screen door. Well, I've been trying to get someone to do it, and you know who. Uh, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> well, I'll take care of it. All right, bud, I'll get out some flour and put it in flour? a... Flour? What are you going to do, bake bread? No, just going to make a little kite paste. Oh, that's so messy, dear. It's much simpler and cheaper to run down to the store and buy some. We're going to make this paste ourselves. I want to show Bud... It's such unnecessary bother. I'll take care of the bother. Bud, get out some flour and put it in a bowl and put some water with it. Okay. Margaret, do you remember how to make those salt beads or whatever they are? Salt beads? I used to make them when you were a kid. You remember. Oh, yes, those things. They'd crumble about as fast as you made them. They have some keen pearl necklaces at the store for 20 cents. I've seen them. They're very nice. Now, wait a minute, Margaret. If you just think back... Dad. ...and remember the fun and thrill of making... Dad. What is it, bud? This stuff is all lumpy. I can't get it smooth enough for paste. Well, here, maybe you're not doing it right. The way to do it is... Yeah, that is pretty lumpy. You better get another batch and start over. Jim, there's a jar of paste on the shelf in the broom closet. Why don't you use that? Because we're making paste, that's why. Mother! Well, it seems pretty ridiculous. Mother, can I go over to Linville tonight? To Linville? Yes, you see... Oh, hello, Father. Hello, Princess. Stir it faster this time, bud. What's going on here? A cooking school? No, this is a paste factory. <laughs> why do you want to go to Linville? Well, Ralph and a bunch of us are going to a movie over there. Drive clear to Linville just to see a movie? We've got movies right here in Springfield, you know. Yes, but this is 3D. 3D? They get the strangest names for pictures these days. <laughs> oh, Father, don't be so utterly Model T. <laughs> What have I done wrong now? 3D stands for three-dimensional. Oh, yes, that's right. It does, doesn't it? Everyone knows that. Can I go with you, Betty? No, you're too little. I'm not so little. I'm going to get some genuine pearls. Dad. I want to go. Well, I'm not so sure anybody's going. Dad. Oh, now, Father, it's practically all arranged, and Janie Liggett's going. Betty, what's the matter with the pictures we already have? Are you kids so completely lacking in imagination that you can't even look at a two-dimensional movie anymore? Dad. Yes? It's lumpy again. (laughs) Hmm. Well, maybe you better get that paste in the broom closet. No need to waste the whole day on one operation. Mother, may I go, please? Well, your father seems to be against it. I'm not against going to Linville, but I'd like to see you have a good reason to go there. I remember when I was a boy. Yes, when Daddy was a boy, he made beads out of umbrellas. <laughs> he did what? He told us out in the garage. No, I didn't, kidding. You've got things a little mixed up. Well, can I go, Father? Oh, I guess so. But it seems a little ridiculous. Oh, thank you, Father. You're a doll. Looks like it might rain by evening, though. I don't want you out driving in a storm. It is clouding over. Oh, it won't rain. Can I go too? <coughs> no, this is just for grown-ups. Wouldn't be room anyway. Aw, oh, heck. Can I have those pearls, Daddy? I guess so. Come on, bud. Let's get out and finish our kite. Uh-huh. Hurry up, bud. I want to get this door fixed sometime. Wait a minute, dear. What about all this flour and water? Are you going to leave it sitting here? Oh, throw it away. It's no good. It's lumpy. Let's go, bud. <laughs> 
and all that flour wasted. How do you make salt beads, Mommy? I don't think I remember. Betty, if you do drive over there tonight, try to get home early. Oh, we'll get back as soon as we can. We'll start back right after the movie. Honest, we will. I certainly don't like the way it's clouding up. What's the weather forecast for today? Did you read it this morning? No, but it's not going to rain. It just can't. It would spoil everything. Kathy, hand me the morning paper there, will you? Oh, don't look it up, Mother. Well, it won't hurt to check. Oh, here it is. Increasing cloudiness with possible showers this afternoon and evening. Oh, you can't go by that, Mother. Gee, I ought to get my pearls before it starts to pour. <laughs> it's not going to rain. No, perhaps not, but there's no use taking chances. We'll see how things look in an hour or so, and then... Hey! And he's going to fly it. With this storm coming up? Who does he think he is, Benjamin Franklin? <laughs> Mother, I've just got well, to go. We'll see. Oh, boy, look at Daddy run. Oh, no. <laughs> Mother, it's not going to rain today. It's not? Hey, look, the kite's flying, Mommy. They got it up. Yes, and look at it rain. There it comes. Oh, creepers. You'd think they'd have sense enough to come in out of the rain. Here comes Bud. Look at your father standing out there getting soaking wet. Boy, oh boy, it's really coming down out there. Well, get your things off and put on some dry clothes. Well, I, I'm not wet, just my jacket. Well, get that off. Hang it in front of the heater. Okay. I guess we could stand to turn the lights on, too. It's certainly getting dark. Yeah, that's better. Creepers. Gee, Daddy sure must like kite. Isn't he coming in yet? That man. Whoops! What's the matter? The string broke. There goes the kite. Yeah? Well, let's see. Well, maybe he'll come in now. No more kite. Did you see it, Margaret? We sure had her flying. Yes, and you'd better change your clothes or we'll be flying you to the hospital. Yeah, look at that lightning. Start counting quick. One, two, three... Four! Boy, that's close. About a mile. Oops, there go the lights. Must have been closer than that. Creepers, now we're stuck here. Hey, it's dark. Where am I? <laughs> it's not that dark. Well, but, but it's gonna be. What are we gonna do? Nothing. That's what we're going to do. Just plain Nothing. No electricity, no nothing. Now, wait a minute. I think this is just fine. We'll light some candles, build a fire in the fireplace. When I was a kid on the farm, we didn't have electricity. Oh, Father. We can't even turn on the radio. Oh, the lights will probably be on again in a few minutes. Nope, they're out all over the neighborhood. Could be a long while before they get them on. Oh, darn. Well, what are you complaining about, Princess? You can live without electricity. Out on the farm, we manage very nicely. In fact, I think it'll do this family a lot of good to get along for a few hours without having everything run by push buttons. Things are getting entirely too automatic around here. How are we going to see? With candles. People got around by candlelight for centuries. We have no heat, dear. The electric control on the furnace Honey, isn't... we can live without an electrically controlled furnace, too. Back on the farm, we got along very nicely. But we're not back on the farm. Mm. Well, I have things to do, honey. Mort Lewis from the home office is in town. I have to meet him down at the hotel at 7 o'clock. I have to get ready to go. I have to get my reports in order. Well, I don't see how we're going to do anything. Now, wait. If I you just... Might just as well all sit down right where we are and just sit. I can't see my own hand before my own face. <laughs> <laughs> now, stop complaining. This can be an interesting and educational experience. You saw how I made that kite for Bud out of that old umbrella. You gonna make another kite? No, but we're going to take advantage of the electricity being off. We're going to make do with what we have. We're going to know the joy and satisfaction of being able to live for a little while without all our super civilized conveniences. We'll live just as our grandparents did. What do you say? All right, dear. Okay. Sure. Princess? Yes, Grandfather. <laughs> well, you know, maybe Jim has something. Hmm. 
living like our grandparents. But they had their problems, too. You bet they did. And one of them is the same problem that bothers some of us today. Sleeplessness. Sleeplessness and jittery nerves. Brought on by the caffeine in coffee or tea. Do you know what I mean, friend? Of course, caffeine doesn't bother everybody. Lots of folks can handle it. But if caffeine keeps you up nights, if you're one of those folks who shouldn't really drink coffee or tea because it makes you nervous and irritable, listen to me. Switch to Postum. Completely caffeine-free Postum. Yes, try instant Postum for just 10 days. I mean Postum instead of coffee or tea, so there's no chance for coffee nerves. Do that, will you? I'll bet you sleep. I'll bet you sleep like a baby. Yes, sir, and feel better, too. Better than you have in years. See if you don't. Get a jar of Instant Postum and drink Instant Postum exclusively for just 10 days. Then you be the judge. <laughs> Well, let's see how the Andersons are getting along with the uh, primitive life. This Saturday has turned out to be one of those days when Jim Anderson is convinced that by George, modern day living is entirely too dependent on the so-called conveniences of our time. So this evening with a good rainstorm in progress outside and the electricity out of commission in the neighborhood, the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street are being initiated into life as Jim insists it was lived in the uh, good old days. Like this. How are we gonna see? It's dark in here. Stop bellowing and find some candles. I can't even find out where I am. I think there are some candles up on the top shelf of the pantry. Where's the pantry? Hey, who let a dog in here? Dog? I can feel his fur. That's the top of my head. <laughs> All right, now, let's stop milling around. I, I think I found the door to the pantry. You say the candles were on the top shelf? They should be up there. Of all the dumb things. The lights couldn't go out any other night. I still don't see why I can't go to the movie with Ralph. Oh, not in this rain in that old car of his. Well, what'll I tell him when he calls? Well, just tell him. Oh, that would be peachy. I can't go to the movie with you, Ralph, because your top leaks. <laughs> I can't find any candles in here, Margaret. Ah, uh, or maybe they're in the garage. No, well, I'll go out and look. Oh, you can't go out without the umbrella. It's in the broom closet. Not anymore, it isn't. <laughs> Wait, look in the odds and ends drawer. I think I saw a candle in there. Where are you, Jim? I'm here. Where are you? Lost in our own kitchen. <laughs> Why doesn't somebody light a match? Oh, I found the drawer. Ah, success. Here's a candle. One candle. Who can see anything with that? There. We have light. Hmm. Now, isn't that pretty? Now, we'll stick this on a saucer and we'll have plenty of light. You see, it's possible to get along without electricity and all these modern gadgets. I'm getting hungry, Mommy. How about dinner? Sure. Dinner by candlelight. <laughs> well, you're the authority on the good old days, dear. How do I cook dinner? Build a fire in the sink? What's wrong with the stove? Nothing, except that it runs by electricity. Oh. Well... I can't see, can't eat, can't go any place. Now, just hold your horses. Is that what they used to say in the good old days? Hold your horses? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Say, I know how you can cook, honey. Over the fireplace. Oh, no. In the living room? Certainly. Come on, I'll show you. Some of the best cooking in history was done over an open fireplace. That's the way our forefathers did all their cooking. Daddy. Miss Kitten? Did you have four fathers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Angel. He's talking about our ancestors. Oh. Yes, sir. Now, look at that fireplace, honey. Logs all there, ready to light. Hang some kettles alongside there. Could you ask for a better way to cook than that? I could, but there's not much point in it. We'll have a cheery fire crackling here in no time. 
Now, just goes to prove how easily we can get along without all the modern contraption and live more happily, more pleasantly. There you are. Now, get the old kettle boiling on that. We'll have dinner in fine style. What are we having for dinner, Mom? Well, so far, we're boiling an old kettle. <laughs> you can cook anything in a fireplace that you can cook on the fanciest kitchen stove. Heat is heat, whether it comes from a burning log or an electric wire. Yes, sir, we'd all be a lot better off if we got back to the simple... Telephone! I'll get it. It's probably for me. Give me the candle. Oh, oh I'll bet that's Lewis calling from the hotel. I'll answer it, Father. Watch the candle. Now you blew it out. I didn't blow it out. Somebody answer the phone. Uh, I can't see a thing. Get out of the way. Oh, where are you? Ouch! You're stepping all over me. For heaven's sake, can't you kids see where you're going? The telephone's in here. Father, you're in the dining room. Hello? Yes, she's here. Betty. I'm coming. Oh, just a minute. Where's the door? Here, bud, hold the candle. I'll light it again. Was it like this in the good old days, Dad? <laughs> ah, we have a light again. No, the trouble with people nowadays, bud, is that they've been spoiled by too much civilization. Just soft, that's all. Come on, bring the candle. I have to go upstairs and shave, get cleaned up. What'll I do? You stay down here and help Mother with dinner. Let's go, bud. Hold the candle up. You know, a candle makes pretty good light when you get used to it. Best light there is. Easy on the eyes. No glare. How are you going to shave, Dad? Easy. You hold the candle up here with a mirror. I'll plug in my electric razor and... <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't have to use the electric razor. Must be one of my safety razors here in the cabinet. Sure, here we are. Uh, that might pull your whiskers a little. Why? Mom used it to scrape the paint off the windows. <laughs> what? Well, there must be another blade. She said it was the only razor blade in the house. Oh, for Pete's sake. Well, I'll have to go without shaving, that's all. Come on downstairs, bud. Hey, I think I'll call Joe. With all the lights out in the neighborhood, we could try out Herb Weaver's tracking hound. No shave? Herb says you can't be sure a hound is following his nose when the lights are on. I wonder what time it is. Sometimes they aren't really smelling, they're just looking. Uh, Margaret. Believe it or not, dear, I have dinner cooking in the fireplace. It's keen, Daddy. We got a table in front of the fire. It's real cozy. Yes, but, I'm gonna uh, call Joe. Margaret. Father, it's going to be simply divine. Ralph and Janie and her date are coming over here instead of going to the movies. All right, Princess. We're going but, to play uh, the piano and sing songs by candlelight. Doesn't it sound simply too, too romantic? Yeah, that's great. Margaret, how am I going to meet Lewis looking like this? No shave? Well, dear, they didn't shave in the good old days. <laughs> the kettle's boiling. I'll get it, Mother. Well, I have to leave pretty soon. What time is it? We don't know. Electric clocks. Oh, I left my wristwatch out in the garage on the workbench. Is it still raining? Hmm, pouring. Where's that old umbrella? You made the kite out of it. Oh. Somebody at the door, Mother. I'll get it. Oh, hi, Janie. Hi, Kathy. Oh, it's coming down in buckets. Hi, Mrs. Anderson. Hello, hi, Janie. Mr. Anderson. Hello. Hi, Janie. Take off your coat. Where are the kids? Oh, they'll be over later. Gee, you don't have any lights either. Isn't it fun? Fun. Huh. Oh, we're having a ball. We're cooking dinner in the fireplace. It's simply terrific. Margaret, how am I going to meet Lewis? I can't go like this. Well, um, we have the candle. Could you singe your beard? <laughs> now look, this is serious <laughs> I don't know what to do, dear You were the one who knew all about the primitive life Oh, that's probably Lewis wanting to know where I am Well, I'm sunk, that's all Just have to try to explain Hello? Lewis? Yes, this is Jim Anderson Yes, I can hear you all right Yes, I know, the power's off out here, too why, sure, Monday will be fine. We'll make it Monday morning, then, at the office. Good. Hmm, thanks for calling. Bye. Ah, that was Lewis. Postponed the meeting until Monday. No lights in the hotel. Oh, well, thank goodness. Well, I'll get ready for dinner, dear. Oh, Father, we have the most terrific plans for this evening. We're going to spend it just like the kids did in the old days. I don't know why everybody's so excited about the old days. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, a, a quaint and lovely quality. Uh, maybe so, but I doubt it. 
Gee, I actually think we should be grateful to that silly little kid. What silly little kid? What's this, Janie? Well, didn't you hear why the lights are out? No. Well, some silly little kid was flying a kite made out of umbrella ribs and it fell on a power transformer. <laughs> Now, who do you suppose that silly little kid was? <clears throat> uh, shall we have dinner? <laughs> For goodness sake, eat post brand flake. So good and so good for you. Mother, that's a swell tune to remember whenever you shop. Because new post 40% brand flakes really are good. And so good for you. You see, something wonderful has happened. Yes, new post brand flakes now have a new, delicious, magic oven flavor. A tempting crisper texture that many folks say make it the best tasting cereal ever. But more important than just tasting good, Post Brand Flakes will give your family those important keep regular benefits you want them to have. So when you shop this weekend, buy new Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling Brand Flakes. See for yourself, they're good and so good for you. What do you know, the lights are on again in Springfield. I guess that winds up the era of the good old days around the white frame house on Maple Street. And how does the head of the family feel about all the modern contraptions at this point? Well, Jim and Margaret have just retired at the end of this long and busy day. Margaret is saying... Mm, I guess Betty and her friends had a nice evening around the fire. Mm -hmm. The dinner cooked in the fireplace wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think you had a very good idea. Letting the children see what life was like without our modern conveniences. Mm -hmm. It's certainly true. We could get along very nicely without them. Honey. Yes, dear? Turn on the electric blanket. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Helen Strom as Kathy, Dorothy Lovett, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, and Mary Lee Robb. It's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Post Wheat Meal, the best hot cereal anybody ever ate. Rich and delicious with a nut-like flavor you'll never want to miss. And hot post-wheat meal is so good for you. Packed full of solid whole wheat nourishment, especially good for children. Post-wheat meal takes just three minutes to cook. Get the big family economy size with a picture of Roy Rogers on the package. Post-wheat meal. The best hot cereal you ever ate. Death and injury are constant riders on the streets and highways of America. Eternal vigilance is our best weapon against them. You young drivers can help by pledging yourselves to help combat the traffic problem. Enroll today as a member of the Robert Young Good Drivers Club. Write to Mr. Young in care of this NBC station and ask for your copy of the pledge and your membership card. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on NBC.